Welcome back to another video everyone. I'm going to be doing another park ranking video where I rank all of the coasters in a given park I've personally visited from worst to best in my opinion. Today I am talking about Carowinds, an awesome Cedar Fair Park that sits on the state line of North and South Carolina that has a huge collection of roller coasters, currently a whopping 14. This park definitely has the quantity in its favor, however, once you get past a few great rides at the top, this park is commonly knocked for having an incredibly weak supporting cast. That was definitely the case in my experience, but I'm going to do my best to rank all 14 of these rides. Enjoy! At the number 14 spot, we have the obligatory kitty coaster coming in at last place. This is Wilderness Run. I did not ride this. This is the only coaster in the park I didn't ride. I actually found out afterwards you can actually ride this by yourself as an adult, so I did not get the credit while I was there. But nevertheless, it doesn't really matter. It's a kitty coaster. Coming in at the number 13 spot is one of the worst coasters I have ever experienced, Nighthawk. And I know a lot of people are going to bash me for putting this coaster this low, but I did not enjoy this ride whatsoever. It was absolutely atrocious. It was a one and done ride, like many of these coasters unfortunately are, and I just did not enjoy Nighthawk whatsoever. You can go check out my full review I did if you want to get a better idea of why I don't really care for this ride. Moving on to the number 12 spot is Flying Cobras, and this is a standard Vacoma Boomerang model. This is actually relocated from Giaga Lake. It used to be called Carolina Cobras, and then it was rethemed to be worked into the newer county fair section. I heard beforehand going into this that this was one of the better Vacoma Boomerangs. To date, this is the only one I've experienced myself, and I thought it would be pretty good because it has the newer trains with Vest restraints on it. This ride was so headache inducing. I had such a bad headache after I came off of this ride. This was definitely a one and done for me. So moving on to the number 11 spot, we have one of the worst kitty coasters I've ever experienced. This is Kitty Hawk. Used to be known as Flying Ace Aerial Chase. This is commonly referred to as one of the Vacoma Hang and Bangs. It's an older Vacoma family inverted coaster. I've never been on a kitty coaster that gave you a headache like this. This ride is absolutely terrible. And that's the reason I placed it up on the list like this among the other rides instead of in the very last spot like you typically would do with kitty coasters because it was just so remarkably bad. I felt like I had to include it higher up on the list. So Kitty Hawk is number 11 at Carolyn's. Coming in at the number 10 spot is Carolina Cyclone, which is an older aerodynamics looping coaster. It has two vertical loops, two corkscrews, and the ride ends with a helix. It's a pretty basic layout. It looks great in the park. And I had also heard from someone that this is actually one of the better aero loopers out there, so I thought it would be pretty good and be somewhat fun. I did not enjoy it whatsoever, and I got a couple rides on it. Yeah, not a good ride in my opinion. At number 9 is Vortex, and this is one of the original B&Ms. This is a stand-up coaster, and it opened in the early 90s. And to be honest, I didn't think Vortex was as bad as I heard it was going into it. It's not the most enjoyable ride, but if you can stand up totally straight and avoid a lot of that pain, there really isn't a whole lot of headbanging. But even still, the layout is pretty bland. There isn't a whole lot to it, and it's still not the most comfortable ride. So it's coming in at the number 9 spot. At number 8 is Woodstock Express, and this is actually a pretty solid family coaster. These Woodstock Express family wooden coasters are pretty common, especially at the Cedar Fair Parks. I've been on a few of these. These are actually pretty fun rides for kids to get into coasters, and it's the 8th best coaster at Carowinds in my opinion. At number 7 we have Carolina Gold Rusher, which is an aerodynamics mine train coaster. This ride was actually very bumpy, I was pretty surprised, um, but it was still pretty fun in all honesty. Um, as we move on with this list, we're starting to get into a little bit better rides now. Carolina Gold Rusher was kind of uncomfortable, but it wasn't really that bad, and I still did have a pretty fun time on it, and I thought the helix was cool, how it kind of goes into a trench, so feel like there's some nice interaction going 
going on there, at least. This was a decently fun mine train coaster. One of the better mine trains I've experienced. At number 6 is Ricochet, which is a Mock Rides Wild Mouse. This is just a really basic coaster. It's just a wild mouse. It doesn't spin or anything. So nothing really special here. It's all right. It, it was a one and done. The line got really long for it because the capacity on these aren't that great. It's not really worth the weight that it gets a lot of times, but it is what it is. And it's a pretty fun family ride. All of these rides going forwards, I have full reviews for. So you can go check out my full review on this to get my more in-depth thoughts. And number five is Hurler. This is a wooden coaster that opened during the Paramount days. This ride I found to be pretty mediocre. I was surprised how smooth it was because I thought it would be a terribly rough ride, but it was actually very smooth. It was just so mediocre, lacked any real forces or airtime, but I did ride it about three times and I at least, you know, somewhat enjoyed it because it was comfortable. It was kind of fun, but it was pretty mediocre. Moving on with our list, we are actually getting into the good rides at Carowinds now, and at number four is Intimidator. This is the ride that really started Carowinds' massive expansion over the last 10 years. This is what really started to put them on the map for coaster enthusiasts. At the time this opened, Carowinds didn't really have much good to offer in the way of coasters, so Intimidator was definitely a great step in the right direction for the park. Unfortunately, I was left pretty underwhelmed by this, especially for being my first B&M hypercoaster, but nevertheless, Intimidator is still a very fun hypercoaster by B&M. At the number 3 spot is a coaster that actually really surprised me, and this is Copperhead Strike, their new for 2019 mock double launch coaster. Yeah, Copperhead Strike just really blew me away. I got about 7 rides on it, and it's just really fun. It has some great pops of ejector airtime, it's really fast paced, and it, re it really never lets up. It's not a really intense ride, it's just a lot of fun, and it has amazing hang time. And it has that awesome JoJo roll at the very beginning of the ride, which makes you feel like you're going to fall out of the train. It's pretty awesome. So uh, Copperhead Strike is definitely one that you don't want to skip when you go to Carowinds. And really quick as well, it has fantastic theming for a Cedar Fair Park. This theming is phenomenal. At the number two spot, we have a B&M inverted coaster known as Afterburn. This opened in 1999, and for a very long time, until Intimidator opened in 2010, this was really the only coaster worth going to Carowinds for, in my opinion. Afterburn is actually a coaster that really surprised me. I didn't really hear a lot about it before I went to the park. I actually grayed out on this. It is so intense, and it's a really fun ride. And I rode this many, many times. It's tucked into a weird spot in the park where you ha kind of have to walk up this hill. And it's kind of on its own. There's not really much else around it. So I think a lot of people don't know exactly how to get to this ride. It's just kind of in its own area. And it was basically a walk-on the whole time. So I basically got to ride this however much I wanted to. So I got many rides on Afterburn. Very intense, very fun, and my favorite B&M invert that I've currently been on. Now, coming in at the number one spot at Carowinds is probably no surprise to anyone, and this is the world-famous Fury 325, which is, of course, a Bolliger and Mabillard Giga Coaster that opened in 2015. It has the tallest lift hill of any coaster in the world, and this is just an awesome ride. It has an absolutely phenomenal layout. It's a really long ride. It has some great pops of airtime. There's like five different spots of awesome ejector, and it's even pretty intense. I grayed out a little bit on the first turn after the drop, which was definitely a surprise to me. I wasn't expecting that, and it's just one of the most photogenic coasters out there. It's just a really beautiful ride. You just can't get enough of Fury 325. So what do you guys all think about my ranking of Carowinds coasters? I'm sure that a couple of these are going to upset a lot of people, but this is my personal ranking and how I enjoyed these rides. So be sure to let me know what you think about all these coasters. Thank you all for watching this ranked video. I have put together a playlist with my other current ranked videos from Cedar Point and Kings Dominion on my channel, and I will also be doing this kind of video for a couple other parks in the future, so be sure to subscribe for more, and also like my page Coaster Daddy on Facebook, and follow me at Coaster Daddy Official on Instagram. Thank you all so much again for watching. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.